interrupting the current Corona cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM372. And although I say Cricketude Busting, I don't so see that in the in the last week. And we have more evidence that uh, we are told to do what we're supposed to do, but we'll do everything else but that. It's really amazing to me. Anyway, I forgot last week I had written down some comments that went through the YouTubes, various accounts, UCY and Sound Minds, and I picked up a couple. I was supposed to talk to them about you last week, and I, I get rolling and I forget all about it. At some point, I don't know what to say in some of these things, and so I don't have all the answers as well. And I have no zero, I have zero res- answers where no one will listen to what I'm saying. And I'm not saying no one that no bun does, but really, there's very few. Thank you for all the emails that are coming out and explaining that you do you do see some of this, and it's important to you, and you're, and you're taking what you can as you understand it by the horns, and you're going to do what you can, and you're learning it's a little bit of a learning curve. You re- realize our society, the people in our society, are, are really not up to it. We really don't know, and uh, so I appreciate I put, provide as much time and effort as I can when someone brings me a question and or part of their research and study to try and bring forward the remedy that they see that, that they need to do. And it's not so easy. It's, it's easy at one re- level once you start rolling with it. it as I say, it's if you have questions, and that's how we get together. We start solving each other's problems to try and move that thing, that ball forward, if you will, if we have a ball to move, if we have a, a if it, this is a game, if we have a score to make. Uh, this is for all the, all the apples here, folks, from what I can tell. And the writing's on the wall, and it's been one answer this whole time, and I've been trying to trying to say try. I've been telling you what it is, and uh, we have more information. But here's a couple questions I didn't get back to last week. I should have got to, I suppose. We'll get to them this week. Kind of take my mind off of where my mind wants to go this week, which is not a good place as far as watching the next development come through to control everybody, and everybody that's watching that identifies it sits there and watches that instead of going someplace where they need to go. It's really kind of an amazing thing at one level to sit back and watch the masters attach all the strings to the puppets, and and everyone is the puppet, and they get, and they respond exactly as the strings will tell them they should. Or don't act, don't respond at all. That's the other problem. Not only do you not respond, you, you sit back and think you know so much, you don't respond or you don't move in countering what has been coming on upon everybody. And so it's, I mean, what came on, what am I talking partly of? This what, George Floyd? The guy had a boot on his neck for seven, eight minutes, a knee on his neck, and dies? I don't even know what to think about that, folks. I've told you all what to do about that years ago. Not just talking, not just saying, oh, that's what's going on. No, what to start to do about it and what to continue to press. And that's what's been triggered. And then you see all the dynamic. Everyone sees the dynamic and everyone continues to talk about the dynamic instead of going in where they need to go and start to shut it all down. In here, it's all here. See, I should have got back to the, I better get back to the questions. I start getting really irritated when the writing is right before you. The black and white remedies are right there. And there's really only one, as I've been saying. And we'll have a, I'll get to a court case that just broke here. The story here just broke as I'm coming on and having to adjust myself. And those of you at Sound Minds, uh, you won't have, you won't have this link. I just pulled it out of the Twitter. Uh, coming after these questions, I'm going to have to get to them here, where the Supreme Court rules here on the pandemic orders. Yeah, that title should tell you everything that failed in the whole case at this point. But uh, moving on to a question, I think it was last week or maybe the week before, and excuse me for not getting to them. I finally get around to the website and then I, I see it. Uh, we don't have direct communication. And again, I thank Jules for allowing us to be at, at, on her uh, YouTube page to have you all see this. And uh, whatever handful of people do see it and however you respond, I appreciate the thumbs up to let other people know. Um, in part, that the, this is something that they really should be interested in, whether or not that people really understand this. And it's just beyond just his, hearing it, folks. This is real. I think this is real. I'm the only place that can give you applicable knowledge to set you on the path to remedy things that we see. And right now, they've handed us the answer to shut it down if we would do it. Not like you see in the cities now being developed into doing what the next iteration is to bring in the martial law more apparent, but for a, a plausible reason. No, that's not that. To what you should be turning around and doing the other thing uh, in there and invading in your numbers as a people. But uh, subversive vermin, 
uh, asked a question, even if thousands of people step up and start writing letters and we are able to put a stop to this nonsense, the psychological damage to the public is already done. Children look at you hatefully if you don't wear a mask in public. My own cousin, who is a nurse, wouldn't come help me with personal with a personal matter, quote, because of safety, close quote. Every major corporation is in full social distancing gear. The COVID PR campaign is relentless and inescapable, and everyone seems to be either, quote, in on this, close quote, or just easily duped. And I tend to lean toward the for, to former, at least as far as corporations are concerned. I mean, the, the PR started three days after the emergency was declared. It takes longer than three days for hundreds of commercials to be made. So what can be done about this psychological damage? Is there a way to reverse fix that? Well, here's a, a couple of problems, and, and it's a, you can't fix someone else's problem, and then you can't fix it if they don't want to fix that problem. I've lived a long time after a, lo a long time ago. I, received, I realized that messages are in the receiver. If you look at it like electronically in radios, something can be transmitted. If you're not tuned into the transmission, you won't get it. If you are tuned in, then it's still whatever the circuitry will, will bring down and, and synthesize to where then it's made audible. And then it's the one listening and how they interpret. And, uh, yeah, the PR campaigns, are, are, have, they've learned how to, to control people in their mind and their thoughts. Uh, all that's not an excuse. Of, let's get down to the how do you do the psychological damage? I don't know that you can. You just work, make sure that you're not one of the, ex the, the um, collateral damages to what's going on. I would ask you to become that example. Don't worry about trying to solve the world. Don't worry about trying to fix other people that really may be incapable or not wanting to fix themselves. Make sure that you don't have a problem, that you work through your problems, whatever they are, that you, like I said, if you focus on something outside of yourself, and if everybody did, and the thing that's the enemy against them, we would likely not have the psychological harm. Some people, like the children, uh, if we will, the, the kids, uh, the sons and daughters are susceptible just because that's how we are, and that's a preyed upon. We're going to have a story here coming up shows you how the programming works and how I sort of anticipated this in a, in a, in a, in a Twitter relative to how you're being, uh, your, your sons and daughters are going to be treated, so-called post-COVID fraud that you didn't stop and didn't find out. But uh, you, I don't know how what you do about the psychological damage. Uh, you're, you're looking at a society full of it. All I can ask you to do is uh, the reverse is for each one to fix themselves. And if you can be an example to those that uh, that may not have the focus in the right place. Uh, you, again, you can't fix someone who's. You can suggest things to them, but you're not going to fix them. And it'll. You ha as I've said before, the way that we've been able to make any influence on people is to be a non. Uh, a, 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 you're. Well, how do I say this? You're. You're controversial in a way, but you're opposing what the status quo in the society is. So you're going to be contrary to that anyway. But. Notwithstanding that point, you bring, as I said, the black and white to people. You don't argue with them. You just listen to them. And if they say they have, like in this case, you have a problem, I'm going to bring what I understand. I don't have anything specific to bring you for anything particular in the black and white, except I know that if you uh, choose to do the more proper thing, as I can see it, you will be setting, you will be focusing your attention and intention where it belongs for you and that will be an example for others, no matter what they feel and what they think. You can't change that. That's the problem. That's the thing you're going to have to just accept, understand it, understand the weaknesses of other, uh, in other people, the incapacities of other people at this time, and just move, move in your intention. It's not, like I said, it's not really a fight. And I'm, I'm looking for people that will work with it, uh, with the problem, uh, I don't mean with the problem. They work the problem through to solve it for them. And so, I mean, I, I don't know what to do with all these people. I'm sorry to hear about anybody getting uh, attacked. But, you know, I've found out that family may not be the best thing to engage in any way uh, for any regard. And lots of people look for lots of examples to do other things than what I think they should do. Regarding the social distancing and things, that is what we are allowing, and that I think, as I said last week, when you engage this properly for yourself, you will be engaging the example for others, and for you, there is none. 
If people, uh, it's been said, if, what's the problem? If you don't want to be out in the middle of people and you're afraid of being uh, infected, then don't step out your house. That's fine. The, the problem is that's not answering the political and or power problem that caused the whole thing. And so I'm focused on, on that. So what can be done about the psychological damage? I don't know. I think we're abused people. I've said this over and over. We're abused people. I think all these syndromes we see are being based on the exploitation of the abuses that have happened since probably everyone listening to me has been brought up with. A few of us somehow have come out and have been able to see other things. I don't even know if it's all the things, but we get to see things. I, I may be a, maybe a different level of things, but uh, somehow I focused on certain aspects and it, it provides me a very particular view and how to cut through this, but it also, interestingly, and I think I have to guide whatever the sources I'm using here to bring it forward and what inspires me anymore, it's guiding me to what those answers are sitting right there for everybody to see. And it's, again, the astonishment to see you can't, you can't even, I, I've been doing it for years now, you can't tell people what to do, they won't do it. You can't tell them exactly what the answer is, they will not do it. They'll do every other thing. It's fascinating. I don't know why that is. So on that example, there's nothing you can do about psychological damage. You just have to know it's there, and you have to be, a, like I said, be, be gentle with people. doesn't mean you've got to take it from them, but be gentle with their, their perception. All I can suggest is be that example. Stop what you see against you and provide people a clear path for how they could do it themselves when they get to the point when they uh, want to do something correctly. They want to finally end it, not continue it by other ways or excuses. Anyway, I hope that answers most of it. Just forget about all the external stuff. Focus for you on what you need to be do. Be that example. Don't be a bad example. That takes a little more work because this is what happens through the 90s. A lot of people became bad examples. This is what you call bad coach case precedent as well. So you work really hard and you look very carefully before you step. You look at, the, as I say, the battlefield. And you do for you what was be best within the construct of what you find for you. And you then act uh, to to stop whatever wrong you see is right. And I say it doesn't have to be the world, although right now the biggest and best thing you could be approaching is the thing, if you have standing relative to this global imposition and fraud called uh, identified as COVID-19, that's where everybody should be focusing that can create a standing. Because I, the way I've been suggesting it to you, it's exactly how you out this whole, it, the dominoes start to fall. You have to go one step at a time, though. One answer doesn't even answer it, but you start the process backwards, which might be the next answer here. How do you, how do you, what's the point? And I've had a couple of people, what's the point of writing letters? Well, it depends on what your intention is. You write the letter to make a record, even if no one else will, but you make it for yourself. And you make it in the truth of what the condition is based on if you best can do it with the the, the occupier, the criminal's own admissions. And so I've been telling and showing you how to do that relative to this COVID fraud. I said, don't focus on other individual people. Find the condition and then find everybody that's promoting that fraudulent condition and then find everyone that doesn't stop it after they've been told. Now you've got an accessory. You've got everybody's work. You've got the gang, so to speak. What that does is establish the record for you, and that is what you start to work from where you heard in Wisconsin, they said, if you don't do any of this, they go on the presumption the government's right. And when the government, and by any delegation, is presumed right, you're, on, you're starting the whole thing on the, on the wrong foot. Where you can show you at least match them and meet them, that there, again, in this case, there is no, uh, and I'll say there is no test. So there is no causative infectious agent that's required or within the duties and obligations of an, that limit the constraint that the agency, now you've got yourself a position to speak from. It has nothing to do with anybody else. It has only thing to, to you, to you, to, for you is to you, and that shows others once they do it if, they want, if they're paying attention. So psychological damage, I don't know. I, have, I can't fix people. I can't fix this gender identity nonsense. I think this is all a general abuse. I think that was noticed to us that we're generally abused people, and it's up to each one of us to fight through that. If we can, hopefully we can, and we focus on better things, and we look and we look for examples of how to better do that. That I think works our way through. I don't think the psychological damage is fixed. We just learn how to how to deal with, cope with it, or put it in a place that's not interfering with our our lives, whether that's through our happiness or our functioning or any of that stuff. So. 
Now moving on to BitChute, thank you BitChute for your comments and your views and all that. Everybody contributes to the amount of people seeing the message here behind the woodshed and again it's about you figuring out what you do to bring someone who's a miscreant to behind the woodshed and you stopping for you that principal agent that's working in foreign and in an enemy that uh, didn't learn the principles of even being nice. But we have the only way we get at that is showing the black and white. Torn Earth Shaman. Uh, here's a question. In some sense, when the law becomes so convoluted so, so that the people are in constant jeopardy of their liberties, property, and lives, the law itself has become treasonous to the principles that established it as a body in the first place. We as people are being oppressed by our government because the people in the government have embraced an idea that they are above the above the people and may force our consent while removing our agency. At the same time, many of the people have embraced the same idea. This makes conflict armed and otherwise inevitable. This is why large nations balkanize and disassociate. We slept and crept into this mess and now it has reached the point of insanity. I think that's a fairly accurate observation except to the point that you're saying that the black and white that exists, I've been telling you you can use to stop it, is not being used by you. That's what's going on, is that you, if you say slept is inaction, and inaction improper, that's what comes on you, is really the ta the history of the world, of the history of man. That which you, the evil that you don't stop comes on you. So, again, it's partly what I say, each one of us has this answer in us, and we have a remedy for it, and it's not, it can't be stopped, Actually, it needs to be heard, and, I, and the problem is because we are in this condition where people in government have no constraint, and I've talked about this since years and years now. It's why I went to crickets. I told you there was no constraint. Economically, I told you when they went, when 2008 hit and they destroyed the economy, there's no economic constraints either. That's all too big for us. What we can do, though, is stop those where it affects us for us. And so, again, we be that example an oppressive government still has the constraints. It's exactly what I've been telling you to press forward in the remedy. And also, I've been holding off saying, I hope people say, have been researching it to understand. It's that habeas corpus. Okay, the restraint of your liberty based in this fraud. You identify the fraud. You don't argue that it's even valid. You don't argue that even that it has the air to breathe. All right, that stops it for you. And once you get the right argument, there's two things that happen here. Either they give you the right argument they, I mean, they give you the right answer because it's not an argument, or they show you a lie, and then you find out you have proof, which never happened in the 90s, that the government, even though your opinion says so, and you can prove it in your opinion, you have written documentary evidence that the government doesn't intend to follow the black and white, and they haven't been. And what you need now is a doc objective basis to follow to be able to declare it. If you look past through history, the Declaration of Independence is that declaration that showed the distinction and laid out the case. Now, the oppressor, the king, didn't agree with it. That's why they went through the, the revolution. But it didn't end well for the United States. It ended in a, in a, a, tree, a, treaty, of trees, a, a treaty of peace. I'll get it right. And so, we got to be careful on what really happened there. And uh, But we get the idea of how it's supposed to work. It's what I was trying to get stated in Virginia to happen. It's now what you're having to do for yourselves in this in this um, corona covid fraud uh, that you have to ter direct how the principles have been violated this becomes the uh, people don't like to do this and they can't see the advantage of doing it because we don't have the insight of how being able to support yourself in an objective basis where you can clearly identify the failures of those in the government is a better position and a better proof and a proof that you have in hand than nothing at all, and just spouting off like you think you can support things, like I hear what's going on with this George Floyd uh, condition. I don't like the guy got killed, but I told you how to stop that a long time ago, and no one listens to this. And so it's going to continue. And then what do you do? You go out there and you riot, and you destroy people's private property, and then you're fomented into it, and then you got the government operatives inside to foment it further, and then what happens? Now the military is in your face, and plausibly so. Instead of everybody that, whatever you think your rights are going down, when that guy got killed, you should have went down to the mayor and said, listen, this stops here. This is it. It's done. 
No, no, you went out rioting in the streets and let them riot. Well, now the militia is going to step in. So now the, all the all the militia people think that they're doing something, to, saving the businesses because they they're going to go out and protect against this uh, this in, this this riot. Bunch of nonsense. All those people put down your guns and go into the government and say this stops. You're going to establish the policies, and if you have to get forceful, and I really hesitate to, hesitate to say a whole lot here, because if I can't get people to write a simple habeas to extract themselves from the quarantine team that they put themselves in because they didn't act, I am not going to suggest what you, rights you have in, in this to stop all that. It'll go south fast because that's what people want to do. They want to do, they want to be the little kid with a gun that they just grabbed and don't know the first thing about how they're wielding it. It's just a, it's a big noise and it does something and they think that they're immune, a superhero on their own because they did that. They don't realize the dynamic that they're up against. Realities are pretty harsh in this in this regard, and you're being played like fiddles. And I just just blown away this week about this. So, uh, we the people are oppressed by our government because we've let that happen. Now, in Virginia's uh, sanctuary city thing, as I explained the error of that and how to correct it, was are the example. I'm clearly now seeing even back looking back. Clearly, that was the advantage that we had to look at that and say this is how the people are going to have to move this forward. And if you don't, there's going to be every advantage taken by the government oppressors again. And they're doing it in these cases, and I'm going to get on to the cases now. Uh, we, uh, we say nations are balkanized and disassociate because they're fomented to do so. And they don't have a, um, the culture, if you will, of a nation has been destroyed about how you're different and distinct and kept together. It's how you dis, it's the old uh, divide and conquer issue. It, I don't even know why that's uh, even to be stated anymore. It's how it works. It's why you need to unite better. And then, and then I was kind of, again, astonished. I'm not astonished at one level because it's the stupidity rolling out into how we react wrongly. It's the same thing I ran up against the Oath Keepers when they were dealing with the Sugar Pine Mine situation or even uh, it, it ten, uh, extended over to what was the Mal Europe thing. Completely wrong. But no one wants to listen until after. And then they got mad at me for explaining to them when it was cooler, cooler heads were around, explaining them how it didn't have to go that way and that they had really overreacted when they could have demanded the proper action. Now, how, many, how much vilification I've gotten on all of this stuff. Same thing with the, with the pipelines. Oh, you go ahead and protest. Don't do it right, but go ahead and protest and then get on me for explaining that you, your protests aren't really working right. You need to go exercise a couple other places and make the public record to show that there is no justice. Why? Because if there is no justice, if there is no courts, and I told you how to identify the COVID in Washington state, how you didn't have a civil government, now it's still a question. Uh, when you didn't do it correctly to expose and make the record that's objective, you didn't give yourself a foundation to act from. And you're going to be led by the nose matter however you go. You don't give yourself the place to stand in the foundation of the law that's been abused and breached by those in the government. is on us. And so I don't know what more to say about some of this. You're right. You see it. But now we have that. We have to, to me, to my mind, and the way I've looked at this for... Oh, at least 20 years. It took about 10 years to figure out some of this, I guess. So I was still in this learning mode and action and trying to go through the courts and figure out what will they do, what don't they do, how not to engage them, where to engage them. And took, that took about 10 years. And then I started to put together the bigger issues. And then um, that was another 10 years. And then now 10 years on, I was able to start broadcasting. And that was only, I didn't want to start broadcasting. I was told you need to get on and start telling people what you found and what they can do about this, because there was just no no knowledge. Am I saying I'm the only knowledge? Well, no, but I'm the only one I can find anywhere that gives you a, an objective way to go prove that what you're going to be doing is is on target, and it's replicatable, and it's tr it's straight up. It's not on, based on opinion. And so let me move on to that. I hope I answered that question. I know it's long, a little bit long. There's so much to say about all this. The consent is not forced. You're actually allowing it. And I guess I want to touch the force-hour consent. They're not forcing your consent. You're not properly responding. And, the, and I, we heard in the Wisconsin case, the government waits for you to defend yourself that, of their overreach. I don't agree with that, but that's where you are now. And if you don't understand that condition, you're going to likely fail at every turn. You're going to be just another example of, 
of those that uh, are then going to be made out to be the the bad element. And that then reversely shows those people that are having psychological problems agreeing with, with this oppressivist condition, agreeing that there's no limitation on people in government. That just sends the message that the, those people, those crazy, insane people that agreed to the government being oppressive, that they, they were correct. Again, that your example is critical here. There's not enough of us as that example is all I can say. That's why the numbers. I told you we, we, we went into mass number requirements when we didn't respond, particularly after 2012 when it came out that you're all enemy combatants. You were treated the way I've been saying you you were by the PATIROT Act and others, and you were in this military consequence, and no one's responding to that. And I said there's a way to respond through that. You do have to get into some international law understandings. And thank you, another email as you read through uh, acknowledging what – the trouble is, it is understanding the principles which I talk through. Once you start getting those understood, what I'm saying becomes a lot, a lot easier to grasp and to then start to implement. And I, I do appreciate that because that's exactly what I felt all when I was coming through learning this and what people do. And I try now to reduce the facts, the condition down to certain bite, uh, di just digestible bites to start with. It's the baby steps. But once you understand the underlying principles, the rest starts to fall into place. And that's kind of the hard part. I don't have a way to, to push. That's like trying to get someone to be psychologically stable again. you you, you got to have them work that out. You you have to work out the, find out the foundation that you work from. And you have to see from there what what is needed. And if you just keep talking and don't settle down and do the research that I'm pointing to, even reading the articles to read within the article what what might be there and be said, you're, you're not going to get to the point where you can, it's probably why I don't have a big listenership. You're just, as a foundation that we don't have as a society or a people, we don't really understand what it is, if you will, to keep that republic. You don't understand that the situation is that all manner of encroachment is acceptable until you say stop. So I don't know what more to pull out. That's the consent that they derive. It's the silence, as I say. The crickets isn't your, just even you sitting there watching as far as the silence or the lack of your lack of agreement with it. The silence is your lack of proper action to stop something. As large or as small as you believe you can tackle. And I suggest for lots of people right now, because it's more and more uh, the problem that we're many steps behind and we're also way behind in time, maybe start with something smaller, all this Although this COVID thing is really pressing us. We, we, we really don't have a ch we, this, we have a small window and it's closing. I'll just tell you that part. It's closing quickly. And here, let me move on now to the first uh, uh, decision that's come out of the Supreme Court relative to this COVID and these pandemic orders, uh, which I said you should have seen the problem right there in this decision, where the Supreme Court rules five to four to uphold pandemic orders limiting church services. So you know my position on this was, You'll know, and you haven't, and I don't know of anybody who can show me, I've been looking, where they argued that the orders were invalid in their face. Nobody argues that. No, they say that the order was too much to infringe. And then you have a church, which is an organization and not a man or a woman, to press this as an injunction, not a habeas. And so we have the evidence now that's going to the Supreme Court. I want you to focus really more on one thing. I told you last week, don't go to the federal court. And if you do, you've got to really consider whether or not you met something. And I said, you have to meet in the federal court a different standard. It's a stricter standard to meet where the, uh, where the burden is uh, essentially not. Uh, it's uh, presumed that the state is correct. And this decision today coming out from a day ago tells us exactly that. It also has some interesting problems, as usually that I see that they even highlight in this article. And on a Friday, the Supreme Court voted 5-4 to four to reject an emergency appeal from a California church over the imposition of limits on the size of attendance, uh, attendance, uh, attendance at services. The church came close to prevailing. The Chief Justice John Roberts joined his liberal colleagues in upholding what he said were limits that, quote, appear consistent, close quote, with the First Amendment. Limits that appear consistent. Now, see, here's where we go, the problem, and I better not interject too much. I need to get through these articles, but 
I hope, see, it's all hope to me that you hear these things and your mind goes to where that might be the problem and that is the problem and maybe this is telling you don't want to go to federal court like I said, but here comes the next sentence that settles what I told you last week, why you don't go, necess necessarily don't go unless you can, f you can uh, meet this standard. This is the next sentence exactly says what I told you last week. The cost ruling is an indication of how courts are applying closer scrutiny to the treatment of churches as opposed to their other institutions allowed to have greater numbers of people. Uh, this is a closer, a stricter scrutiny against the fundamental right that the feds view. You're going to impliedly hear that the agreement between the, you're looking at the agreement between the balance of power between the feds and the states and not people. And the, the state, when you read through this story, you'll find that they discuss how that state law is is given de uh, deference. And I told you, you have to avoid this deference stuff. You better really think about how this works. And if I'm talking and you don't understand what I'm saying right now, it, just take it as the evidence that you are a people that don't have the knowledge you needed to protect your way of life. If you don't like me saying that, Republic, if you can keep it stuff, it's your way of life and your expectation of privacy and all that goes down the tubes where you don't have the capacity in you to understand that the system relies on you to ensure the limit of its power. And that requires you understand a thing or two. That's not my rule. So those of you that tune away or don't understand or argue with me, this is not me at all. This is me trying to show you what you're supposed to be paying attention to them all. This is what's going down. This is how they're, they're doing it to you. And until we figure this out as a people, not one or you two, as a people in mass, this is going to be a little bit of a slog. You can stop it for each one of you, but not for the whole. And if you don't stop it for the whole, then, that re then you become the agent where you have to start. You could start helping once you get one of these done, where you uh, are relieved of the burden of a fraudulent uh, order. Well, that's declared. That's out in the open now. And that then you would turn your attention on the things that interfere with the, your uh, your liberty and the uh, freedom to associate as well. This is also not something that was put in here. But at any rate, so we go on with this story, this report. Uh, the there's and they want to go on. A, this guy goes through a discussion that President uh, Donald Trump is trying to override state orders. The court's coming in saying that's not going to happen, and that's true. That I don't know what Trump's talking about. This just tells me that there's a lot of no nonsense. Uh, over all of this, trying to get you to believe in a hero worship that the Trump can do anything, and it's actually a local answer. When you hear that the stricter scrutiny from the Supreme Court comes down to look through the federal federal courts to constrain uh, in a model of deference to the state, that is not your avenue. And I've told you, you have to go to your state habeas to do this. Okay, so this is uh, just like Law 101, as far as I can tell. Now, this, this I'm not having to do, do anything about the religious services thing. I'm not talking anything about that. This has to do with what, how the courts are treating this, and the federal court's coming down, and the Supreme Court now has struck a blow to everybody who doesn't bring a habeas and then argue the invalidity to the fraud. And this is what I've been telling you. This is focusing. If you impliedly read this, you'll see it requires now that you go where I said you had to go. You can't use these organizations and you can't use injunctions and you can't argue and not argue the validity of those orders, which are provable on their face. Notwithstanding, I'm having one email discussion. One of the states, uh, they're not as straightforward as I found it in a couple of other states. And so we have to go through and parse the statutes a bit different in order to pull out exactly what I've been telling you is there. It's there. It's just stated in a slightly different way. So that's, again, we work together. I can help uh, what I understand that to guide. And it takes a little bit of more, a little bit more study in uh, to f to work it through but you can you can see the all the elements are as i've been saying and they sit there to be presented just like i've said and through the um, through the method um, so we have our first decision on that uh, uh, relative to the state's imposition is deemed reasonable under the stricter scrutiny between the relationship of federal to state that may not it does not stand the same when you go from uh, the men or women or the posterity 
or the to the state. That relationship is different. Okay, so Roberts wrote in the brief opinion that the state could restrict churches to 25% of their capacity with no more than 100 worshipers at a time. The court also rejected an appeal from two churches in Chicago area that objected to Governor J. Pritzker's limit of 10 worshipers at religious services. And so this is going to strike a big blow. It, this is the insanity of a state going to having to go to a federal court to defend itself. It shows you you're not living in a constitutional republic anymore. And there nobody is bringing up the fact that those orders are the people, the states do not have the right to assert they have the right. And no one's challenging that. In his concurrence, Roberts wrote, the precise question of when restrictions are particular social activities should be lifted during the pandemic is a dynamic and fast in fact intensive matter subject to reasonable disagreement. Our Constitution principally entrusts, quote, the safety and the health of the people, close quote, to the politically accountable officials of the states to guard and protect, close quote, citing Jacobson versus Massachusetts in 1905. If you think there's old laws that don't have precedent and they don't matter, here's the current answer to you. When officials, quote, quote undertake to act in areas fraught with medical and scientific uncertainties, their latitude must be especially broad, he cites Marshall versus United States. Understand what they're saying relative to what I've told you for months. You have to take away there's any medical or scientific uncertainty, and you say there isn't any at all. And you show how. And you use their own statements to do it. Where the broad limits are not exceeded. So here's, again, no more limit talking limitation. Where the broad limits are not exceeded, they should not be subject to second guessing by a, quote, unelected federal judiciary, which lacks the background, competence, and expertise to assess public health and is not accountable to the people. Your answer is local. It says it right there. And let me give you the list of things I've been telling you. You're going to look in the statutes to destroy in the local so-called public health authority. The competence, the background, and the expertise to assess. What was I said? I said the very first thing we found that the counties didn't do, and certainly the governors never did and can't, was do what? Assess the public health on a particular thing. I've said that over and over. The very first rule of the due process obligations and duties of the counties as public health authorities was violated in that they never assessed. What they're assessing is with their background, competence, and expertise. I've explained how you destroy all of that if they try to assess. But in the reverse, you say, because they didn't have it, because there was no test, they had no authority to assess. And they never did. That's why they never did. And this, the whole thing runs on the presumption without the facts. It didn't, none of this, you then say, because... Uh, in concurrence, he says, it's supposed to be what? Fact-intensive matter subject to reasonable disagreement? No, if it's fact-intensive that has no disagreement based on obligation and duty, that's what you go on. It is fact-intensive, but you don't set it up in a place of disagreement. And if you look, read through this and you do all the inversions, knowing you have to do this, it starts to, for me, it explains to me how I'm going to address this in short fact statements. How to dis destroy what's already been stated right here. Like in this one paragraph, I've told you in this one paragraph what he says. I've told you how to deal with it. Okay, in almost in its entirety, as I can see this as well. Now, let me go. Robert's decision is striking a fairly cursory treatment of the other options the state given the obligation of the state to must show that the limits are justified by a compelling governmental interest and narrowly tailored to advance that interest. The sharp decision shows, as we discussed earlier in this article's, in this author's uh, discussions, how such deference to the states in a pandemic needs to wane with time. Does it, folks? 
I don't know. But let me get back to this. So now you have to you see the phrase justified by a compelling governmental interest. How is uh, the pro promotion of fraud a compelling governmental interest? That's one of the statements you would place after you show there is no test. There is no way to find the infectious agent. That was required for them to find before they could make a certification or do the assessment. There no, there's no assessment. I, don't, I, I tell you, if you, don't, if you really understood what it means to have no test, there is no test, you'd understand that you have the power in your hands. And we'll see the people have the power in a habeas proceeding. Whether you all appreciate that or not, and I know we've heard the, oh, maybe they don't exist. Well, they do exist. You just have to put them together correctly. Yeah, going on. So he goes on here, and, he, and I want to get to the punchline in a way here. Did you hear in the title how he reflects, this author reflects, uh, how such deference to the states in a pandemic tends to weigh with time, folks. Why would they be a ta pandemic? If you look in your states, they only have the authority under uh, the way they can assess, which is not to the level of a international pandemic, which is defined as an, re an epidemic gone to regions by the WHO, if they reference the WHO, not the Rock Group or the OWL, but the World Health Organization, brokers of pharma, harma, they are sitting there to put this word pandemic out as a suggestion. The fact that the court decision relates to a pandemic tells me they were never told that there was no lawful orders that came from an infectious cause. And so this justice is wrong. This justice was wrong to in, uh, to accept without scrutiny whether or not the state had the right, as I said last week, to assert that they had the ability and ability to have a compelling governmental interest. Again, what's the compelling governmental interest in promoting fraud other than an oppression and a tyranny? In his dissenting opinion, Justice Brett Kavanaugh wrote that the state had failed to satisfy the high standard for review in such limits on the free exercise of religion. Well, isn't that interesting? He says there's a high standard of review, and then they failed to look at whether the state had the standing relative to the law to have an order. So we know that there's a high standard of review. I say, you put that in. There's a high standard of review, but it's not at the a force and effect of a fraudulent order, the high standard review is whether or not those orders were valid in the first place. Your second step is whether or not the val it's valid exercise relative to interfering with fundamental rights. And I, I, the churches really have a, a problem in one regard because I think the political right is probably a higher fundamental right here relative to this after they've proven they had the right to implement an emergency public health order of, evident, of any description. Again, the infectious agent is found and found in a territory started as assessed and it expands beyond, con, uh, beyond uh, containment and so that uh, they move into mitigation. This is all procedurally laid out. None of this has been followed. But there's a high standard. No one's presenting it here. So we now get a bad case president given not against maybe this issue, but where it should have been. The Kavanaugh says, California, quote, California has ample options that would allow it to combat the spread of COVID-19 without discriminating against religion. Let me stop there. It goes on. The spread of COVID. See, they agree the symptoms are good enough. No one's challenging whether or not there's a cause to those symptoms which the state law shows when you find it. And again, like I say, there's a couple pieces of statute here. I'm noticing you have to get at their duties and obligations. Inside there, you're going to find the distinction between the disease and the, and the cause, where I found it in other states directly stated in communicable disease, where you see the disease and the communicable part, infectious agent, showing you there's a distinction. He only refers to the symptoms in this Supreme Court case, law of the land. Again, we're finding a failure in the system. And this is where those of you that want to sit back with your Second Amendment and wait and wait and wait, if you were actually in a proper mind, you would take that and show this is a failure. You would then learn how to add the position that is not being talked about. That was the substantial part to this case. And you say, listen, you start fixing this or en masse, we the people, like we were supposed to see happen in Virginia, we the people are going to have to take our right to alter or abolish this place. 
your your rule that says you only have to answer what's before but never truly put strict high standard scrutiny on the plaintiff considering it's a state going after fundamental rights your failure to do that is a failure of justice in fact this decision is a, a fraud upon the court now a fraud on the con upon the court is not fraud those of you that study a little bit should know that so when you hear me say fraud upon the court your mind should not say fraud Brought upon the court is the adverse effect and the imposition or improper ability to get to justice. And this is an obstruction to that. And so you have to understand these, those basic principles, and that's what you put in your statements. I know it's a little bit much more than what I've talked about, but those are sentences that you place in inside what's required for your remedy. When you say unwarranted restraint of liberty, you're going to have to put a couple facts to show how. We're going on with dissent, who agrees there's a high standard of review to be put on relative to what? The fundamental rights. I'm saying there's been a higher standard that was never looked at, that was required to be looked at to show whether or not the plaintiff or the appellate or the what, whoever the moving actor to the Supreme Court was had right to say that. Had they looked very carefully under state law, which there's a federal law is supposed to follow, otherwise it trumps. But here's another point of it. If they don't do this, they're violating state law. They're violating straight state law to put, to refuse to look at the infectious agent. But uh, he goes on to say, but absent a compelling satisfact, just, excuse me, at, but absent a compelling justification, parenthetically, which the state has not offered, the state may not take a looser approach with, say, supermarkets, restaurants, factories, and offices while imposing stricter requirements on places of worship. The state has also a, has substantial room to draw lines, especially in an emergency. But as relevant here, the Constitution imposes one key restriction on that line drawing. The state may not discriminate against religion. In sum, California's 25% occupancy cap on religious worship services indisputably discriminates against religion, and such discrimination violates the First Amendment. The church would suffer irreparable harm from not being able to hold services on a Pentecost Sunday in a way that comparable secular businesses and persons can conduct their activities. I would therefore grant the church's request for temporary injunction. Let's go back. He talks of irreparable harm. That's injunctive relief. That's not the habeas, uh, the habeas, which is the restraint of liberty, which is really a constitutional violation on its face. No warrant. Let's go up. He's, he says indisputably, indisputably, indisputably discriminates. Well, it does on its face, doesn't it? That they're mistreated between uh, businesses. This is not making even a special line. But I want to go back up further and imposes a, a key restriction. He says, especially in an emergency. Folks, that's a specific legal term. Emergencies are what you do to save someone that has trouble breathing, and so you have to do an emergency medical, an EMS would do an emergency medical treatment uh, to put the tube down their throat to keep the air going down, let's say. That's what you do. You don't have to have permission. That's an emergency that doesn't, that isn't, uh, doesn't have any other answer to it in the immediate sense. None of these are emergencies, especially after all these months. We move from emergency into disaster. And so they're not even, they're putting the standards, like the, the Supreme Court's answering this thing when it first came out and not looking at the fact that this is long since emergency. And then let's get back to the point. They can do that because all they're looking at is symptoms, and there's a big promotion about those symptoms still being available. There's symptoms of the common cold and seasonal flu in the world. That was sufficient to cause this decision. It's completely in, unju unjust. But they focused in on an emergency. This has not been an emergency under state law. If you go look at what those things are, and there's distinctions on them. A, wor a year's worth of suicide attempts in four weeks, the unintended consequences of COVID-19 lockdowns. Not to want to discuss this, it's just a proof as I was coming in 
here last, late last night or this morning, it comes up. I wanted to, and this is what kind of angers me about what I see in the protests and the people just watch on and want to speak about all the operatives and all this other stuff and don't turn around and go back to their government to stop it. The, the so-called leaders are the cause of this. I've told you how to stop all this. And then the problem with everybody is all fired up and burning other people's property in these all these cities, causing all this riot, bringing down the military on your heads as, as it is, and nobody, where, where George Floyd was wrongly murdered, and those guys should have been put in jail like everybody else, which is what your real complaint is, instead of burning some shop owners and thieving their stuff and supporting that because, oh, that's a riot, and because people don't have another voice, which was an incorrect implementation of Martin Luther King's son over what Martin Luther King was actually saying if he wasn't an operative. It's not an excuse to go riot. This is the reason for what people act out. They're not supposed to be acting out. But nobody has responded to a year's worth of suicide attempts in four weeks relative to COVID. Not one was of you responded to that. Not one of the rioters responded to that. But they'll take out someone, uh, someone named, uh, go out and take everybody's stuff out relative to someone named George Floyd, who's just a lineage of government uh, oppression of cops getting away with murder, and none of you want to stop, step up and stop it in any way. Is I mean, a, a hypocrisy beyond, in my view. A year's worth of suicide attempts in four weeks. What about all the vet stories? Right before this hit, the vets were killing themselves. You want to talk about a harm, psychological harm, and people committing suicide? I don't know how you stop this one. You just got to get to people. You got to get them to get out of their woe. I don't even know where to begin. You got to give people something else to think about for a while. Give them a cause. That's what I'm talking to you about. Find a thing you want to make right. It kind of removes some of the insanity from you. When you're facing and you realize you're facing an occupier, you don't expect evil, easy wins either. So you're not expecting at the first loss your whole world gets collapsed. And so in some regard, I've been offering you some of the response on how you deal with an insanity that's coming and pressed upon you when you find yourself incapable against this big monster that keeps telling you it's a big monster and doesn't let you know your answer is a very small little uh, pathway. Years of worth of suicide attempts in four weeks. We've heard of all the collateral damage to COVID, and not one of you rioted for all of that. None of you. You didn't even do it in your own defense because you might be one of those. Whether you be suicidal, whether you be losing your job, whether you're losing your house, whether you can't make an income, whether you can't go to church, whether you can't do everything that you freedom association and everything else that you were supposed to, whether or not you even understand your antecedent rights prior to the government. I've touched all of this stuff. It's kind of irritating, and I think I better move on because I get really irritated fast when I see we have what we do as a society instead of what we ought to be doing. What we complain about and want to respond to and support instead of what we should have been doing the entire time. And I think I'm going through my mind right now as I pause. My mind went through all the people, I, my friends, my colleagues, the people I work with. They all have different things they wanted to get done. A couple are vets. Those guys are swinging giant Babe Ruth baseball bats against the, the vets. Uh, the Vets Administration to make it work more and better to identify this thing in the vets all by on their own. I know that there's a lot more vets that could be doing that if that's what you were inspired to do. If if harm to people, if death to people for whatever caused by government imposition and oppression uh, was the cause here. No, what we do is we let the riots go on, destroy public property, justify it because the the man. By that word, the man, you're saying that somebody's more important than you. But the government officials have created a condition that allow it, and you are too stupid to figure out how to stop it on your own. That was on you. And then to support that is really beyond, I don't even know, beyond hypocrisy. I begin to lose the words, folks. I've been, my life is turning into one, I don't have an adjective now. So... Years worth of suicide attempts in four weeks. Where's been everybody rioting again against that, if that's what you wanted to do? And there's other people dying for other reasons. We heard the story, the, the five months of the past five months have been replete with evidence that they focused in on a fraud and they threw everybody else's health care out. 
Those people are dead. Did you know them? Did you care? Did you see the boot, the jack boot, or the medical jack boot on their throat while they took their last breath? Did you riot because of that? And so the ramifications of all this came out. Whether or not you want to deal with this or not, I don't know. Shock video, not so shocking to me, but shock video, this is how you get to get, oh, but everyone's going to get their, their clicks. CDC going door to door to collect your DNA blood. DNA and blood. Alarming video of CDC officials harassing American citizens for DNA samples as at their homes are sparked curious, further, sparked further controversy for embattled and feckless agency. That's on you, folks. There's everything I look at says you have the ability to stop it, and you're not. But somehow, I look at some of the feckless agency. What's the problem? Did they ever stop? Did this happen to them, and did they stop it? Did we expect anything different? And everyone that knows that Gates and Fauci are the, are the enemies of all time and don't look behind the scenes and said that they're in a system that allowed it? Just about, as I said last year, last week, excuse me, gang, the gang bangers? And I, and I was going to write back on that. That word, that term was used to great effect to a dear friend of mine who's dearly departed in government, and she would use that every chance she got when they came out like a judge sitting in a courtroom. She would say that was, well, she put it, was put in jail a couple times for using that term. Gangbanger. That's my tribute actually silent to her. I want you to know about it because there's people out there that are willing to put their face, at least their bodies out there, even though it may have been not too advisable, she was right there in the front lines. And the gangbangers were her, were people that were in the system that would do injustice right in front of everybody and no one knew it, and she did. And we're watching that right now. Everyone watches it, but no one really responds. They go after the minion agents instead of going after the cause. As I said last week, you stop, you expose this COVID-19 fraud, and those people... You now have a foundation to present that those people start to go away. And we go on. We thought people were supposed to stay at home to avoid infection and coronavirus. The fact that CDC officials who could be infected with, from visiting multiple homes are now visiting residents to collect your DNA uh, w would certainly contradict those federal stay-at-home edicts. Well, you haven't stopped the edict. And so they get to come under that color. And those of you that listen to me, you say, when they come at that color, this is not a feckless agency. This is a felon. And you know how to stop them. Or, as I've said, you know how to make the notice to hand them so you're not harassed by them further. There's also, I want to maybe make a comment to this. There's something going around the Internet. They actually identified it as a meme, but everyone's picking it up as the fact that you can do this. And I want you to go read what the laws you're talking about, about putting out the fact that no one can tell you uh, make you wear a mask and because it would, uh, you don't have the, there's no medical, there's no question that they can pose to you to make a medical inquiry and that would be doing it for you to wear your mask or not in a place. Be careful on how that's applied. I, I agree with the, it's an interesting addressment of that, but be careful on how you apply it and someone who knows better, you match some, you meet up some with someone who knows better. The best that that can happen, I don't think, is in the HI, was it PPA, in the what they call HIPAA. That's not in there. Those are on medical medical entities. So that that's not applicable there. But the closest you're going to get is on ADA, the Disabilities Act. Th that might be there. But be very careful on what you choose to 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 make this thing these things work instead of just a directing. See, this is the thing. Instead of directing it, taking all the same energy and directing it correctly. Anyway, I'll go back over to here. The CDC is going around. It's taken DNA. We've talked about how they're taking DNA. All these tests are probably uh, making a DNA database. Uh, they certainly want that information. They also want that DNA because they're coming up with with uh, uh, future vaccines uh, and, and ways to synthesize DNA and all that stuff we heard of in the past. But this is not shocking. This is what happens when people don't protect themselves the way they're supposed to. Uh, let me add now a comparison. We've been focused on mRNA vaccines 
and vaccine technology, but consist, uh, correlating with that at the same time, there's also plasma DNA vaccines that are coming that appear to be actual DNA manipulation. I have a link for you if you want to read it. I couldn't get, I didn't get down with all the time I didn't have this week, Ten uh, about to number 10. You want to read, we should go down to maybe read number 8, and they talked about uh, what I focused on really was well, the existence of them, all these of these two types of uh, vaccine delivery systems are there. They're they're not told to mo to most of us how they work. Uh, but I got down to reading and reading, and I got down to number eight: inflammatory responses and toxicities. They tell you in this article that I brought out. It was uh, I find think I found it on a Twitter uh, account, uh, say, tell, explaining these things. You're all worried about RNA, but watch out, the DNA uh, types are right here. And it says, while both DNA and RNA vaccines are often thought of as a simple an expression, as a simply an expression system for a desired protein rather than an immunological inert, uh, the both DNA vectors, which are based on bacterial plasmids and in vitro transcribed RNA, uh, mRNA, activate the innate immune system. DNA plasmids do so via their CPG motifs which stimulate the TLR9 while the GP CPG was successfully used as an adjuvant for a recombinant protein-based hepatitis B vaccine license in 2018. The impact of the immuno, immuno, immunogenesy of, of DNA vaccines by increasing the number of CBG motifs in the plasmid has been less clear. And you keep reading about this, it's like eye-rolling stuff. I had to, uh, like I said, I could only get through 10 before I had to start doing other things, they tell you in number 8, we have inflammation responses. Not good. They tell you at 8.2, the toxicities of an mRNA vaccine. They're preferring apparently the DNA. The DNA actually has a problem for you with your DNA. I'm not so sure about the RNA. The point about that right now is there's no real proof that it does anything. What I don't like about it is the hybridization with the DNA in your immune system and how the body treats that. There's no test that it actually harms us, but it is happening. It is this brand new technology. It's supposed to happen much faster. They also tell you it doesn't last, and you're going to have to get more of it. So why would they want the DNA, your DNA swabs? Because they're also talking about this is precision medicine, what's coming down. I told you it's part of Health One last week. And so as long as you argue and complain with me or whatever you do, just don't really put the importance of what I'm saying. This is coming on you. There, and there's a way to stop it, and we aren't. And this, this comes up to suggest with the state that we've been in, and again, uh, the, uh, the attorney I love to hate uh, writes again, and he says it again, uh, from 9-11 to COVID-19, it's been a perpetual state of emergency. Actually, it's not a state of emergency, but that's okay. We'll go with the state of emergency. He does actually come out and make this. Uh, this is the Rutherford Group uh, attorney. I don't remember now what his name is. At any rate, I don't see it. Uh, but at any rate, he talks about uh, there were, and I told you, but we were bringing up in 2020 the 9-11 continuation moved into a medical harm because that's be the worst for us to deal with. Not that we couldn't, but it would be the worst for us to gain speed up enough to be able to deal with it, as you see now the Supreme Court will give deference to the state. My object to tell you has always been you have to remove their authority to have deference. You've heard this over and over and over. You've heard it for years before all this. It's just the way you have to approach it. And you have to find how to do that. But he goes on to say, John Whitehead, I think, came to my mind here, but who, who authors this, uh, they were born in the wake of 9-11 attacks, raised without any expectation of privacy. These people that are graduating this year he's talking about, now, in 2020, these people have graduated, have a whole life since 9-11, uh, don't have the expectation of privacy in a technologically driven mass surveillance state, educated in schools that teach conformity and compliance. Well, to what? There's a future plan. Because they know you're not going to respond correctly, folks. And so they're getting the little, your little ones, you've, you're handing them over to the groomers to teach them and treat them how to accept this. And they, they will, essentially, because you're not being the example the abuse that's being put on kids right now, I don't know how to solve that. All I can say is you have to be that example. I think the double-edged sword of this, keeping them out of school is going to be one way to do that. I don't think people understand that. 
I don't think people understand the power that they've been handed to be able to get their kids, their little goats back, and train them better. Stop the abuse. But going on, he writes, and again, I agree with them at some part. I disagree with uh, why, who he is, and what he's not doing. Like I disagreed, and I told you uh, about Lionel. He's an attorney. He's a prosecuting attorney. Does he offer anybody how to do a habeas? No. He asks question, endless questions. Does it get us anywhere? Criticizes at a distance. John M. Whitehead points out the same thing. He's an attorney. Does he explain what we have to be doing? And if it's different than what I'm saying, does he explain that? No. Let me continue writing because I'm going to get to the point what he admits to. But he keeps trying to touch it softly, but he admits to it here. Where he says you have an, uh, the coming police state. It's long since coming, folks. It's here, and it's not a police state. It's only a euphemism, as they said in police action that you're giving license to in the George Floyd problem. Hey, going on here, he says, educated in schools, your little ones are educated in schools that teach conformity, compliance, saddled with debt-ridden economy on the brink of an implosion, made vulnerable by the blowback from military empire constantly waging war against shadowy enemies, policed by government agents armed to the teeth, ready and able to lock down the country at a moment's notice and forced to march in lockstep with a government that no longer exists to serve the people, but which demands they be obedient slaves or suffer consequences. Do I disagree with that statement? Absolutely not. What I disagree with is he never tells you, he gives you a list of what you need to start doing. He never tells you how to start asserting yourself in a record in a remedy that you can't be stopped from engaging. He never does that. I went through the list. I, all the things he says you should do, I've been doing. And yet we're still here. And we're still having to fight it. Why? Because we've never had the opportunity to engage a remedy like the habeas corpus, to start showing the fraud in government. And no matter, and if the military is tied behind it, you see they lose their cause. Remember those dominoes I said start to fall? No, you don't go light a torch and break a window with a brick they handed to you in the streets like we're seeing evidence of. No, you got to turn around and you got to go into the city government and you tell them we have a couple of options here. And you being the so-called oath, you under the elected official, as you heard the Supreme Court say, you are the authority. The Supreme Court said just, they just said that you are the authority and you will stop this. And if you don't, we will stop this. And you better have your mind, your head screwed on straight when you did that. But at any rate, you don't, you don't and you won't. But I'm going to, I'm just telling you that much about what's supposed to be happening relative to this ongoing tyranny against you that people believe that they can just rail against, and that's going to be sufficient. Anyway, John Whitehead does a, he does admit it's a military empire constantly waging war against shadowy enemies. Uh, you know, the WMD nonsense. We have not stopped any of it. COVID-19 is a shadowy enemy which we can stop for each one of us. I, I just see the answer right here. I really was partially excited last week going out of the broadcast. I said, you know, the 200 million, 300, 100 million people doing what I'm asking, this thing's done. And then I got to reality time Monday. Astonishing crickets, just absolutely missed it. Going to continue to miss it. I hope for better, but that's a hope and a change. It's not going to happen. The change is going back to what we should have done to keep the republic, not that sound we hear or the clanking of the coin in our pocket. Oh, man. Entire Florida Department. Here's what we have to look forward to while well, we see that they're, tra they're cha changing, uh, training our children to be compliant to these people. The entire Florida uh, Police Department busted laundering tens of millions of international drug cart in, uh, for international drug cartels. Uh, pretty interesting. I didn't understand how you go through this. I like some of these stories because even though I don't have a criminal mind, I get to see how you do mo giant lo money laundering schemes. It's something I wouldn't even be a, a of mind to, but the police are all geared up to go do, live in hot fat, uh, high on the hog and all that while you're being destroyed. And this is the people that are supposedly enforcing law. Obviously, this is the problem of an injustice that keeps going. Uh, oh, this is a, the federal government stopping it. I guess there are heroes. Well, uh, no one stops to think that the COVID is a giant mundering laundering scheme either. And so while they get this little group uh, of thugs down in Florida, Ball Harbor, 
a population of 2,500 people, and these people are living high on the hog, millions and millions and millions working for international drug cartels, making money laundering. Do you think that Trump or Fauci or any of the corporations or Gates or CDC or any other nation is not a big money laundering scheme under the color of COVID? What, do you think that drugs, you don't think drugs are too far removed from here in this whole scheme? So anyway, we see the there's the evidence here. What are you going to do about it? You can complain it, or you can start outing because the compliance that they're making for you and your kids going into the future, your little ones, is going to be one of being subject to these thugs, those that would put their knee on the neck of a man who was handcuffed and kill him, and then all you can do is burn someone else's business down and think that's righteous. Uh, or, or allowing silently in the in the remember the feds had to come in to stop this one you didn't have any local check and balance in florida no and that's what the people allow and that's what's going to continue well, until you say no and now we get some uh, always the military consequence the military conditions reflected here and there uh, that i keep telling you be cognizant of and work through actually bring that in without discussion address the military part of it by looking at the standards that it's looking at to empower it and defeat those and you're going to be fine uh, well until they want to show outright that's when you might start I mean, it won't be called a riot once you find out that those are the real oppressors and they're stick, sitting right there in your seats of government that'll be a different action but at any rate it won't be a riot uh, for those of you that understand there i'm gonna i gotta really cut short of what i really want to say because People take it all wrong. They have no foundation, no actual sense in them, common or otherwise. They have no sense or foundation of what the principles I talk about. It's fascinating. I don't even know how I know them anymore. I look around. There's like no evidence of most of it. I really have to work hard to find the rudiments, like I told you about looking up police power. Uh, 600 physicians looking at the military reflection. 600 physicians say lockdowns are a mass casualty incident. More than 600 of the nation's physicians sent a letter to President Trump this week calling a coronavirus shutdowns a mass casualty incident. This is terrorism, folks. This is how they describe war and the casualties of war and terrorism. With exponential growth, negative, exponentially growing negative health consequences to millions of non-COVID patients. Quote, the downstream health effects are being massively underestimated and underreported. This is an order of magnitude error, according to the letter initiated by Simone Gold, MD, an emergency medicine specialist in Los Angeles. That emergency is the type of emergency that they should be talking to, not the one that the Supreme Court just thought they saw. And so we have here the evidence that this is mass casualty events. This is a war of... This is a war, a terrorism action against you. Where are the so-called riots? I say this very loosely on that word because you're not supposed to riot against this. But where is your response to all the jackboots that were put on the necks of these people that caused these mass casualty events that were now getting witnessed by the licensees of government themselves? Now, what about those cooked books that we keep identifying? Again, all this is able, you are able to use all of this evidence to show how the, uh, the however much you want to how these notice these uh, well they're only guidances from the CDC as well how these guidances were accepted as the fact and they're not they're fraud you, for you to use to defend your to grab the key that keeps you in your quarantine prison in your home or even just contained around it by any uh, regulation whether that's to go for 25 people or less than 100 or six feet away or whatever you have it in your hands right here why are they cooking the books they're actually admitting to it i told you that they'd have to they're running out of numbers they're gonna have to find some other thing and then we got george floyd and i don't disrespect i, I don't say that in any disrespect that man was murdered so don't don't miss the point here that man that man or all the other men and women deserve justice but it's not going to be by burning someone else's business down and justifying it and allowing some foreigners to feed the to fuel the fire of out outward support to try and make some political statement out of this those people that you people that are in those places don't need to focus on the riot those are going to be paid for by foreign agents you need to run to your your government and say listen you caused this you did the covid you locked these people up you got cabin fever on top of all of it 
And in one state, what was it? Was it Saint? Uh, was it Minnesota? The cops went to protect that cop instead of protecting the police department. Well, oh, that was a may That's the mayor's decision, isn't it? Why didn't a bunch of people, hundreds of thousands of you, go to the mayor and say, "You fix this. You arrest that cop. You arrest the accessories to murder that the cop's been charged over. You put the 200 people that are protecting him, and you go have them serve." do the law and you start to enforce the law properly stop allowing you the protection to your military self and if you don't fix it we will it's going to take a higher mind here if you will a better insight in order to start to begin to start stop this and start to bring the proof and if you just start bringing out if see the Floyd thing is a problem because now they've changed the scenario on you it's not COVID. And so now you're out of place and you're out of point. And now the system takes deference again on how it's going to do that. And you have, I told you long before, you haven't stopped that in the policy side in order for that not to happen. In other words, if any man dies or any woman dies under police custody, that's no, remove your immunity, period, done. You're going to stand, uh, stand the trial just like everybody else would without all the protection. At any rate, moving on, influenza death request correction. U.S. data and influenza deaths are false and misleading. The Centers of Disease Control and Prevention acknowledges a difference between flu death and flu-associated death, yet uses the terms interchangeably. Guess what? That's influenza. What about COVID? So if they'll do it in influenza, they're absolutely doing it in coronavirus. Important, uh, important report. You can get it as evidence. They're acknowledging that there's been errors. We can show that's a plan. It's a plan to promote the harm and allow you to be harmed. And it's the thing that everybody has based, all states have based their information on the CDC. You need to understand the CDC is only for guidance. It doesn't remove the obligation and duty and the burden of the local government to do assessment. As I entered into this broadcast and repeatedly show you is the due process for an epidemic of a communicable disease so any reliance is done i told you they're coming out to acknowledge it to the protect the locals from what they didn't do you have to go open that can of whoop ass on them and show them that that would doesn't matter what the cdc did said they had their only obligation and duty to do their own assessment and there was no test there is no test the test is for antibodies not the cause and so we hear, notwithstanding the CDC, despite all this bad uh, information, bad intel, gets you to be all responsive or not responsive, and their agents are now going to go get throat swabs. Apparently they have the problems with the tests. They keep coming out with the tests are no good, even if they were to be antibody checkers and not the virus anyway, just to check the antibodies are wrong. It even appears that if you don't take the swab just right, and that should be interesting, why does the swab only have to go just right and not anywhere in your body? Should be a problem for you too, but at any rate, we have uh, the error correction on these, uh, notwithstanding the CDC says, oh, well, some related and some directly with the flu got commingled. Well, then their whole system is pretty well under, under scrutiny. It's also the test, the way you take a test, a COVID-19 throat swab test robot developed by Danish researcher why because they have to get that swab right down in the right spot in order to do it and his one of his claims here and this guy's been work if you didn't think this was in the pipeline that it was going to continue because they realized you weren't stopping it somebody spent a lot of time to make a robot to go in and hold a swab to put it down your throat and why because the way they put that swab is can create an error itself and this makes that takes away that one that one element of variability in the test itself. Pretty fascinating. What I got tripped out about is when I saw the picture, it reminded me of the scene, although it's not quite applicable, it was the scene where that robot, I can't remember the name of him, in the Matrix, and uh, Neo's coming out of the pod, and the and, and the um, the floating uh, cr critter, a me mechanized critter, grabs him by the throat and disconnects his connection. And then throws him back in. That's what it kind of looked like the, to me. That that's what they're making for us: is the swab, this robotic swabbing, to grab you by your neck and down your throat goes this thing. And we don't know that they don't put an implant there, as I've seen some other people say, 
Why is it exactly that spot? Well, maybe it has some reasons for uh, resonance and or uh, signal quality. I don't know. Why there? Why this robot? If it's not going to be ended, which is a telegraphing to you, to, there's money in technology to do things that are not necessary. Remember, coronavirus is the common cold. Influenza is the seasonal flu, neither of which are novel. There's not even a test going to be made on any of it. And so we have these companies, this, uh, this guy inventing this thing to get his throat culture. At the same time, Japan ends coronavirus emergency with 850 deaths and no lockdown. Exampling how this thing happens without the emergency, without without the, excuse me, there was an emergency they declared, but that there was no ex extraneous need uh, and needs to lock down anything of any importance. I won't even read the story, do the headline. They've decided to pull it off. All this is coming at the time of CDC's doing all this. It's admitting it doesn't have numbers. And what's the point of coming and getting the, the swabs if your numbers are wrong? All that stuff starts to come to play. Any pieces of which you can bring as evidence against to show that there is no reality behind what, they're, what they say a, the agent is. Again, it depends on how much you want to add to your statement. I would be asking you not to put too much. But to, like in some states, I'm now noticing some of the where it's a little bit convoluted, where you have to find their authority and their powers and obligations and not in the definitions that I said. The powers and obligations in, their, in those definitions tell you the extent of their authority. That's the definition for what you're dealing with. When you have to prove that, it may take another level of of proof. And so it's just a few more lines. You find the more most definitive examples of evidence here. Again, I want to get back to the CDC only give guidances. The WHO only provides suggestions. When you look very carefully, the state only gives guidance to their licensees. There's no authority in any of it, certainly relative to the fundamental rights that you have that they're interfering with. They're restraining your liberty upon. And so when you start looking at the specificity of what they're actually doing and place that in the context of lack of authority, in other words, a guidance only gives a, a suggestion, if you will, like the, like, like the WHO does, it's not what the doctor will find. And so now we have this complicity we can pull out if we wanted to, if we wanted to develop this more that I'm not saying to do, but it's there. I, don't, I try not to talk too much beyond what we can find if no one's really doing the habeas compilation of how the, the, the thing's invalid and wanting to remedy get, puts a key, the key that's in your hand to stick it in the door and turn the thing open, turn the, your quarantine door open. I'm kind of got my hands tied a bit about going too far because everybody's already saying it's too complicated. And that is just not settling down and focusing in what do you want to do. If I ask quite a few people will ask me some suggestions on what to do. I said, well, what is your intention? We need to lay down and identify what do you really want to do. And that can be a tough thing for people. They don't want to commit. The U.S. plan militarized control of population. The COVID-19 testing action plan is also making the, the rounds. And if you read and understand it, why wouldn't they do a COVID robot to do those samples to take away one more element? They're telegraphing to you they have a problem with their tests right there in the taking let alone whatever else it might be doing for DNA swabbing collection for a future vaccine for your precision medicine or the implanting of a, a four-year safety implantable object, whatever the heck they want to do there that you're allowing them to without showing why are they doing this if they have no test. We don't know, worry about that. We want to know your DNA. What's the difference? It doesn't matter. This is for your safety. You don't understand how to argue that, but it's all by plan. Why does the CDC have their, their people going out? Why are they doing contact tracing? Because we... We read why it's in the plan. It's been around. COVID testing is part of the Rockefeller Foundation plan, remember? And now they've come out with, inter why is it not interesting and surprising? They now have the National COVID-19 Testing Action Plan. And this indicates the pragmatic steps to reopen our workplace and our communities. However, it is not simply a matter of health issues, as it appears from the title. The plan that some of the most prestigious universities have contributed to, Harvard, Yale, John Hopkins, and others, surprise, prefigures a real hierarchy and militarized social model. That's technocracy as well. So you're looking in the military. I've talked to you about how they're joining this together. They're all the same, ultimately. They acknowledge it right in this story, the militarized social model. 
at the top the pandemic testing board ptb akin to the war production board of the united states created in world war ii the pandemic testing board would consist of leaders from business government and academia parenthetically government representatives would not would not in the first row but but finance and economic re representatives being listed in in order of importance the supreme council would have a uh, case okay, so a more supreme court here apparently the supreme council would have the power to decide productions and services with an authority similar to that conferred by the president of the united states in wartime by defense production act if you didn't think you're in a military consequences here is the rockefeller plan to drive it home over and over and you're sitting there quiet and thinking that the maybe even thinking that the riots are good or maybe thinking the riots are no good and not doing anything you're supposed to be doing to stop this thing that is on the roll and on the run and before i move too far about this because it becomes important on what they use the new zealand crime rates soar rates soar following gun ban so together with all this we see the truth but when you have no way to protect yourself crime rises and no different when the police can't step out the way to go protect one of their own than the burn the, the even the police department burnt when you're not there, with the, when the National Guard can't stop the, or the police can't stop the riot, the National Guard come in with their heavy, heavy weapons, who they admit they're not trained to deal with people in a civilian mode for safety. And then I hear, because of the guns, the militia is going to go out and protect those businesses like it's some hero worship thing that we're going to go do and, and make ourselves valid and viable when none of those people ever stepped up to stop the problem in the beginning as I suggested earlier, relative to the police and the policies that needed to be brought out. Not because I say that's the way it works. I say that's the way the system's wired and has to work. To me, this is a lot of work we shouldn't be doing, but because you now see the Supreme Court will give to the state deference, you have to understand the constitutionality of what's happening to, happening to you on the federal level does not exist. I'll bring his name up because it just popped in my mind. William Roberts, become vocal local. This is this is that thing. He didn't know this, that part. He didn't know this part I'm telling you, but he knew that your action would be local to you. And I'm reinforcing that from through what he used to tell you on a totally different way and, and reason. It's the same answer, see? Again, when you stand... When you find your path to the stinking abyss, it's all the same stinking abyss, and it has to be handled the same way. That's one of the ways I proof out how or whether or not I made the proper search, research, study, whatever, and I come to the same ultimate conclusion because that's the way the place is wired. Then this is it, locally. Supreme, Texas Supreme Court reminds, despite what now just the, <laughs> the Supreme Court of the United States just said, Supreme Court reminds cities there is no pandemic exception to the Constitution. This is a stark relational change between what your rights relative to the state are in the state and what the federal government will extend to the state if you go federal. When they're messing with Texas, the Texas Supreme Court says there's a limit, but they also say there's no pandemic exception. They agree there could be a pandemic, when in fact, I don't know that in, in Texas, again, there's an assessment for pandemic. They first have to find the, the communicable disease if viral infection is the problem. And you heard it might be bacterial infection now that they're bringing into your DNA, right? That they're using as DNA surrogates. You heard that in that last or a medical article. What are you being affected with? Well, they don't know. We don't know, do we? Because the antibody test doesn't really prove a source. doesn't pr produce the cause. But it's being agreed to by the courts because none of you have brought it up. And I can just tell you, we've been trying to bring it up in the people to see the decision and know what's happened in the government and why it's more, even more important for each one of you to step up is when the governors came up with their plan to so-called reopen all the local governments decided, and I saw, I, I identified this weeks and three or three or so weeks ago, and I told my colleagues, when they were told certain things in certain ways, I said, there's been, already been a decision to make, that the governors have come up with a plan. All jurisdictions are just going to follow through with the plan, and this thing is now looked at as going to go its course, 
because that is the fastest way they can do it without making a fed a court case about it not a federal case but a court case about it to stop them nobody no jurisdiction no government is going to stop this now why and in every case no one argues that those orders had no basis why because there is no test they can't do the first point of assessment and you heard the responsibility is local for that in the supreme court case so texas uh, the four justices of the supreme texas supreme court just fired a shot across the bow of government officials continuing draconian COVID-19 restrictions in Texas. In a concurring opinion, Justices Blacklock, Guzman, Boyd, and Devine reminded everyone that, quote, Constitution is not suspended when the government declares a state of disaster. Quote, as more becomes known about the threat and about less restrictive, more targeted ways to respond to it, close quote, the opinion continued, quote, burdens on the constitutional liberties may not survive judicial scrutiny. This opinion was a message. The Constitution still applies, and the courts will enforce it. Folks in Texas, go get them. Go get them as I've told you to go get them. You don't just look at whether or not, see, the burden of the constitutional liberties will survive. You show that the whole state of disaster had no actual lawful basis. Now, it's interesting what the relationship of the third paragraph is. Such a message should be unnecessary. I totally agree with this. And they go on to say, and reference the more important point, at the height of the Civil War, the U.S. Supreme Court sternly rejected even minor alterations to criminal procedure to accommodate the crisis, noting that the Constitution applies, quote, at all times and under all circumstances, and that, quote, no doctrine involving more pernicious consequences was ever invented by the wit of man than that any of its provisions can be suspended during any of the great exigencies of government. And I've said you prove that exigencies do not exist in this matter. Let me point out, too, they said this is a criminal procedure. Since when, were I told you before, and since when were you presumed guilty in crime without due process? That the habeas is your only answer, and they're recognizing it. That you're not in a criminal condition. And yet you're not, because when you look at the statutory acknowledgement, you'll see habeas wasn't only constrained to crime. But you notice your whole governmental facilities are focused on that now, like I told you last week regarding how they describe police power and the deference given to the state already in the state for that. And if you don't understand these principles, there is no way that you really have an opinion on any of any anything, even the opinion on what you think is wrong in the world and how it should stop and the injustices. You have no, no way to gauge it at all. Then I just, I'm sitting here pausing. Is there, my mind's going, is there any? No, there's really no way because of the way the thing is wired. There's processes that must be followed. And we are on the back side of a bad problem, uh, and they got the processes in their favor, and they've been deciding that in their favor because no one's bringing the thing, taking that power away from them, the power that's in the people through the habeas. Texas court, virus fear alone, not enough for mail in balloting. In other words, you just can't stop your, you have to, can't force mail-in balloting because there's a fear of a virus. There it is again, folks. There is no virus. There's no test. The Texas courts are coming out right now, notwithstanding they're Republican, to guide you along what, to confirm what I've been attempting to guide you on. Again, I, mine's guidance as well. You have to accept it and make your own assessment. And I say go to the black and whites to remove any doubt. That the, the, the Texas Supreme Court is showing you there is, are these limits, notwithstanding what the Supreme Court just stated, and that's because of your relationship to the state. Justice Eva, Eva Guzman wrote, the court was unified in the conclusion that, quote, fear of contracting a disease is not a physical condition. So, you have to have a demonstrable exigence, something physical going on, just not your perception of it. So, what are they doing? They're saying insanity doesn't actually rule 
at least here in Texas. That's all in Texas? Go get them. You put your case together like I'm suggesting. You don't go in with an injunction, and you don't, and now we're going to have proof here as well. I can't remember now where it's at. We have proof in a discussion, in another decision, that uh, maybe I've already covered it, and that's why it's coming to my mind, uh, that you can't use it, you can't go for those similarly situated. This is not an equitable remedy. Uh, but there's a moving on to te from Texas. You see the, no, that was Republican. We move into pol po the politics of, of the Democratic uh, majority control of the state of Oregon. Uh, this is huge. Oregon, Oregon government orders Facebook to remove Gateway Pundit article on Republican ballot scandal. Facebook complies despite hundreds of confirmed testimonies. Gateway Pundit readers may recall a recent story that we did to shed light on hundreds of possible thousands of Oregon voters who mysteriously had their party changed. Most of the Republicans to non-affiliated, uh, non without their permission, consent, or knowledge, effectively denying them the right to vote in their party's preliminary and disqualifying them from their precinct persons. Now, so a court, they went to the Supreme Court. Instead of the Supreme Court looking at the validity of the COVID orders, they look at this issue, which I guess they should have, but then they order someone to not do a report and Facebook complies. It's not a condition that you want to understand, that you want to misunderstand relative to what the government can do ultimately to a private party. And this gets me over to what churches do relative to your private rights of worship. But associations can be ordered to do certain things whether or not we agree with it. And when it comes out of the Supreme Court, purportedly that's law. And so these people are making a big a complaint relative to the censorship of what they believe and likely can show would have been fact-based reporting. So we've got, again, I guess I'm pointing this out here to show you you really have to look at the courts that you're entering with and, and identify how you're going to go through and have the answers to why you're where you are and for the reasons you are. This is the same Supreme Court that now has before it those other churches in Baker County that I told you and showed you the interventions of which, none of which argued the invalidity of the orders. And so it's going to be interesting to see how this democratically charged group of, of attorneys under color of judiciary in a state where the Bar Association is an agency of the state decides what that corporation is going to do relative to a challenge. Now, that, again, flipping through the, the state, the courts, what the courts are doing with this, and if you look, if you will, between the lines of this, you'll see what I've been saying and how you keep track, how you keep your your discussion narrow and don't let it get enlarged, there is an ability to interfere with a, the truth. And so you, this is what I've been saying, you have to look at that and, and identify, and this is showing you that the, the corruption of that is sitting there, and when you look at how you're going to present your position, how you would be able to anticipate that type of a corruption, plant the seed of the exposure of that in your document as well is a one step up, if you are maybe even more than that step up of technical uh, perseverance than uh, most people are aware of. But again, working through this, you can, you'll be able to, ex I can explain some of this to you. That, th that corruption sits there where you wouldn't think that they would have anything to do with your, your statement of, and they couldn't censor the press. When you see that they are, you have to understand again, this is a confirmation that you have to raise the, your game, so-called. You have to really lay it out very succinctly. More is not better here in this regard in a state where that's going to be disregarded. And that's why what Pritcher, Pritchker or whatever was moving those into the federal court because of that strict scrutiny thing. Here, uh, this Pritzker case, which the Supreme Court gave a nod to the right and deference to the state, is now maybe put into jeopardy. Clay County judge again rules against Pritzker's stay-at-home order, grants exemption to downstate tanning salon and manager. Again, these uh, I got it interesting. Why are this the salons, the uh, the being uh, the front end of this gla uh, glamour stew salon back in Salem, uh, the lady down in Texas? Why are these the ones that are leading the the charge? I don't know why, but 
at any rate, they're finding some fertile ground with this judge. This is the same judge that listened to the representative's case. The Clay uh, County judge has been repeatedly criticized Governor Jay Pritzker's uh, stay-at-home order against ruled against the governor on Friday, but stopped short of issuing a statewide temporary restraining order and that had been sought on a downstate business owner. And this is I'm going to cut to the chase here. This is the case that you see where, and I've got the transcript for, well, ostensibly the transcript, it wasn't signed, but it, it looks like it would be the transcript from that court relative to what was said. And they explain there was a, bunch, a couple of claims made for relief. The first two claims in this was denied. The importance of that is those were denied to those similarly situated. His order, where it says it wasn't statewide, it was actually only relevant to him. That's, again, proof that it's not an injunctive relief. Otherwise, it would have applied to those similarly situated. You have to read inside what he says here to understand the, di the technical dynamic that you're into that I'm saying confirms what I've been telling you about the habeas. The injunction, this is not an injunctive remedy. The courts are free to give the remedy that even wasn't asked for. I think we're seeing that here, where in the second two counts, the remedy is extended to the man and the and the business, but not to those similarly situated. So the, again, if you are non-dependent, you will step up, stop your whining and complaining, move a habeas, show the invalidity of the orders. You'll do better than this guy because he was saying he's complying with the rules, but that it is to you, each one of you, if you want to be free of this, is required to step up, as Wisconsin case told us, they're waiting for you to do that. And the only question is whether or not they'll actually give it to you, and it may be a political question, but you have to load the case to show when they don't give it to you, then they're the ones that are doing a fraud on the court relative to that, and they have to start to answer to that. At least get the record. They have to answer it in the fact, here's why. You want people to see that there's not justice in these particular any particular state. Maybe there is, maybe there's not. We're not seeing any 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 discussion. This judge really comes out and lays it out, though, for you. He goes and shows you the insanity and shows you the juxtaposition between what the government imposes that's arbitrary and capricious against what they're not allowing and then what they do allow. And this is the discussion that the Supreme Court allowed to this state. Okay, but it was based on what? A church organization relative to agreeing that the orders were valid and compliance there would, therewith, and that the uh, apparently the Supreme Court also then agrees it's only to that extent. That's another proof in that other case. But I, so much to read. I don't know. There's links for you to read through. And when you get to the discussion of what happened in the court, and he goes through what's being reported, but then he talks about how he's rendering the case through and that there's no extension to those similarly situated, you m just better well realize that's not an injunction case, That the way it was brought. And he, he comes out strongly and people get fired up about this because he said, y Americans don't get ruled, essentially. He says, the way this is coming down from the, uh, the governor, uh, the Illinois governor there, this is a ruler coming down on Americans, and that's not the American way, if you will. So it's very, it's like a, do I say, patriotic it's sound patriotic sounding, but you got it. You can't get lost in that. That's the truth, but that's not the way the decision worked. You understand? If that was the case, then the case would go to the whole state, but it doesn't, and it apparently can't. And it, and I say apparently can't because the way that this works is on an, an I say non-dependent uh, assertion. You're not dependent on those rights, on those orders, especially if they're fraud. In fact, I thought it came to me, maybe a hashtag, a non-dependent, all is one word, you have a non-dependent. You're also anonymous. You have to make yourself inert to this whole system. And you start to show that by saying that they didn't comply with what they were supposed to in order to be something at all. But anyway, this court, this judge, if you want to read something, you really need to read how he's synthesized all the juxtaposition of in, uh, insanity the arbitrary and capricious nature of it all, and he'll lay it out for you. But that's not really what you're going to be arguing. That's the consequence of a rule being implemented that was based in fraud. 
you would do that as an alternative statement if you laid out the fraud. You would say, and the consequences are, you could just copy and paste what that judge said. The consequences of not doing the assessment, not relying on an infectious agent, not relying only on guidance without their own proof, and not being able to prove because there is no test, causes, and then you just quote and paste what he's just put down. As a, as the, the judge in the, as Illinois stated, Michael McCaney, this is what the cause is. Okay, so you, I can just see copy and paste stuff utilizing other sources if you had no word in your mouth. What you have to understand is how you situate your your own assertion against its extension to you, this this thing called COVID and these rules. And I, have, again, have the link of the judge's ruling. It's a, uh, it's a transcript, supposedly. I didn't get the signature copy. I assume it sounded right. I didn't understand a part of it. It's a dynamic that's going on between the judge and the prosecuting, or the attorney general's, I think, deputy attorney general. And I think what was going on, it sounds like there's a little bit of uh, interesting dynamic that the attorney general for the state said, you know why I have to ob object here. As if he's telling the judge, don't blame me and give me future pains and sufferings because I'm, a, I'm being obstinate about your decision. I have to appeal. Uh, found an interesting little dynamic there, and so I don't know what it meant. It just I just had a little. I had to go read through a couple times. Say, what is the dynamic in this in this interaction? It's just a procedural interaction, and so we move on to what it is I've been saying. I want to bring it a little bit more prominent to you. What is a habeas corpus in regards of a criminal case? A uh, habeas corpus has been now dele relegated to criminal cases, and yet if you go to the statutes, which I will have a link to, if even if I don't get to talk to you about it. Uh, here and read it through, which is a quite extensive thing to read through, uh, in Texas no less. I thought, just happened to come up, oh, okay, I'll, I'll throw this in and talk about it. They regard it through criminal case, but you have to read the statute that it doesn't only appertain, appertain to criminal cases. It really does apply to anyone uh, unlawfully restrained of liberty. And what this measure does is it requires the one, and this also dictates why you go to the state, the one who is underneath the scrutiny of the judge, the, the court has personal jurisdiction over, that's the court you go to. And you'll find that written in these documents, uh, how this works. So convicted criminals who believe they have been wrongly imprisoned or the conditions in which they are being held to fall below legal minimum standards of humane treatment have the right to seek assistance of court by filing a writ of habeas corpus. Habeas corpus Basics. The writ habeas corpus, which literally means to produce the body, is an order issued by a court of law to a prison warden or law enforcement agency holding an individual in custody. Let me just extend it. The fact that these orders holding you in custody, I would equate to you being in prison, like I've been telling you it all the time, and they've done so in a certain way, and your objection is, is not listened to if you don't assert it. Again, they're, they're waiting for you to say that there was something wrong with the enforcement of what they're doing. It requires that the delivery, that they deliver the person to the court so a judge can decide whether the prisoner has been lawfully imprisoned and, if not, whether they should be released from custody. This is why I threw out the quick joke. I wonder how they're going to come to each one of you that files a habeas, pick you up, bring you to the court because they're holding you in your prison cell called your house. If you thought that they were, if you, all your patriots so-called are looking for the FEMA at, camps, you're, you're sitting in one if you're in quarantine. They got you focused on a certain spot. That's only for the worst of y'all, but they've already got you in their FEMA camp. It's called your house, if you missed it. To be considered enforceable, the writ of habeas corpus must list in evidence showing the court that the ordered the prisoner's detention and imprisonment had made a legal or factual error in doing so. Okay, so this is why I say you lay out your cause that there is no lawful cause, there is no lawful enforcement power, and they're holding you unwarranted and without law, and in fact, it may, breaching the law. The writ of habeas corpus is the right bestowed by the Constitution to individuals to present evidence to a court showing that they have been wrongly or illegally imprisoned. In prison, that's not hard to understand. You explain how. Though separate and from constitutional rights a defendant in the U.S. criminal justice system, the right of habeas corpus gives Americans the power to keep the institutions that might imprison them in check. 
how much more, how many more people and sources are you going to have to say that show that this is the that this is what you have to empower you? In the countries without habeas corpus rights, the government or military offer jail political prisoners for months and even years without charging them this, them with specific crime, access to a lawyer, or the means of challenging their imprisonment. Aren't you really a political prisoner where they haven't shown a cause to the virus? And so if you be quiet, you don't even get it on the record that you object, and they just sit there and agree. that You must be sitting completely okay with it. And they're completely authorized to do what they're doing. So you have any argument you want about not doing it. The point is that until you make the record, you're just agreeing. That is your consent. Whatever your excuse as to why you think it won't work. I, uh, this is the problem. Until you get that wrote, written down, until you show that the record shows that they won't, and they're still going to go against that, they're still going to give the fraud air, you don't have a record of that, you don't have a cause. As soon as more of you, you and others that come with you, because you're the example for others and, and as well, and you forget about the other guy except for yourself, and you make that record, and the next one comes and makes the record, the next one comes and makes the record, at some point, no different than happened in the Revolutionary War, there's a mass of people that are all together, you know where you all stand, you have the foundation, you have the objective evidence, and you show, whereas we saw in Virginia, the maladministration is such that no branch can fix the problem, you're still suffering under the fraud, and you now have established the right to alter and abolish the government as you see fit. It may or may not agree require the Second Amendment. And anyway, I better st I say there's so much in my mind. It says what people should be doing in these towns where the mayors allow the cops to protect their own when they murdered somebody. I bet I just have to stop thinking about it. In some countries, without habeas corpus, the government, military, often jails political prisoners. When I saw that, I said, "You're a political prisoner where they have no actual rights." And when we can find that the uh, the effects, the consequences of what they're doing are a political agenda of a foreign agent, now you have your treason and your insurrection. Something that your Second Amendment will not fix. That's the other point about this that I don't think people quite get. For everyone that wants to promote the Second Amendment and starting all this up with that, I, I don't get it. Let me move over to criminal Code of Criminal Procedure. Again, all this is in criminal procedure, but in Texas now, the Code Title I, Code of Criminal Procedure, Chapter 11, Habeas Corpus, it goes through and explains in the words of the Code what you can expect and I don't know how uh, how I'm going to find it because it's down in the bowels of this section where it will talk about anybody restrained of liberty by any uh, government official. And that, again, shows you that the requirement that the re there is a requirement that the court of competent jurisdiction is the one that has the judicial power over the government official. And so in this regard, by, by definition, would say you don't go to the federal court unless the federal court's going to agree the state officials subject to the federal authority. And then you're going to have another truth. That's a different type of truth. So as long as we all sit without moving our stuff forward, uh, we aren't making an ever, a record of how, the, how the, the crime is being perpetrated. Something I think failed miserably over the years for people who thought they were correct made some assumptions and they were actually incorrect and didn't know how to check for that, something I try to get you to do all the time. Really habeas corpus is the remedy to be used when any any person is restrained of his liberty. Now this is in the criminal section, but it says any person is restrained of his liberty. This is not specific to crime. This tells you how we've shifted everything over, even in Texas. It is an order issued by a court of a judge, a competent a court of a ju court or judge of competent jurisdiction directed to anyone having a person in his custody and under his restraint, commanding him to produce such person at time and place named in the writ. Not a motion. No, it's a writ. And uh, show why he is held uh, in custody and, or under restraint. And in your petition, you show they have no test. Ultimately, you go through the list of things I've done in past broadcasts. You lay out line by line, sentence by sentence, that they don't have a thing that their order is based on to make it valid. To whom is it directed? It runs. The writ runs in the name of the state of Texas. So those are in people in Texas. You are the people running this through for yourself. 
It is addressed to the person having another another under restraint and is in the in or in his custody, describing as near as as may be the name of his of his office, in if any, or of the person whom is it is directed and the name of the person said to be detained. There's your starting of your form. Okay? If you want a form, now you can get a form, and I've heard they're available. I said don't use those, just go back to the statute. Use the form they provide to you as a guide, but go and use the statute because what I found in the forms that are offered by the state is their their administrative form. Actually, they're not really asserting the quite uh, the type of right. You can do it without it. Anyway, moving on, it shall fi it shall fix the time and date and return and be signed by a judge and by the clerk of the seal uh, clerk with his seal where issued by a court. That means you file it with a with the clerk, the clerk issues the time and date it's signed, and then you send that out. That's the, the paper. There's a certain process that goes on. Want of form. Well, the writ of habeas corpus is not is not invalid, nor shall it be disobeyed for any want of form. If it substantially appear that it it is in is issued by a competent authority, and the writ sufficiently show the object of its issuance. Okay, so if anybody was wondering about the real, what, where's the form, you just need to comply with the elements. And it need, you need to necessarily follow the statutes to do so. Construction. Every provision related to the root of habeas corpus shall be most favorably construed in order to give effect to the remedy. This is imperative shall. The remedy is to inquire into the lawful hold or restraint of liberty by an official. It's not on you. And to release that individual if there's any question on that lawfulness, and to protect the rights of the person seeking relief under it. This is a, a burden for you, not against you. This is not like an injunction either. By whom uh, the writ may be granted, the Court of Criminal Appeals, the District Courts, the Circuit, the County Courts, and any judge of said courts have power to issue the writ of habeas corpus. It is their duty upon proper motion to grant the writ under the rules prescribed by law. So here you have your writ, and within that is a motion for... The rules prescribe how this motion will be done within the writ, and it's really just a request that justice be done relative to the facts. Filing fee prohibited. I said it was cheap in most states. Here in Texas, it's notwithstanding any other law, a clerk of the court may not require a filing fee from an individual who files an application or petition for a writ of habeas corpus. How powerful is that right? Acknowledged right there. You just get to file on the restraint. You can do it for someone else. It says so here, which I may not be able to get to. But so those of you that want to understand where your form is, go to Texas and get this link. They're in every state. Go look under the habeas corpus provisions for your state, and you'll see you'll see how that works. You'll see what the so-called form is. Does, can you do it in handwriting? Absolutely. There's nothing stopping. This was this was done by people who didn't weren't even literate. If you could just get the idea of that you were being held restrained, then they would have to they have to listen toward it. And so if you if your case is presented within the habeas correctly, as I've told you, there is no case, there is no communicable disease on a on an emergency order that's supposed to have assessed one. You're going to show that there's no warrant and authority in anything they have they have against you. I guess they have to make the decision whether or not they really want to violate that provision. If the real militia would really stand up in the right way instead of the way I hear them being exercised over and over. And if a lot of people did this, then it wouldn't be a question. Why? Because they'd be able to show not just one person is being affected and adversely and harmed and there's no remedy. But when there's no remedy, then you get to say the people require a remedy. And you've just proven that you're not, the system the way it is needs to be altered or abolished to accommodate the people so they are not harmed. That's up for you to consider for you. You have the key to your prison door. Thank you, Grimmer, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and the broadcaster and all that stuff you do to promote all that stuff that we do in uh, Jules or UCY TV and Sound Minds and normal, Normalization of Ignorance and whomever's out there also promoting uh, the, the broadcast and then uh, getting also the, the syndication for the rest and the likes and the whatever, the comments. I'll try to get to more of those as I see them. Thank you very much. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.